Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Monday, April 12th board meeting at the Queensbury Free School District. For the quorum, the board president, um, please join me and stand at the pledge of the flag. Please. So the budget, as we move through it, it's sometimes taking the same information and presenting it in different formats. Uh, the present the form budget itself is broken up into three components. There's an administrative component, a program component, and a capital component. So just about 70% of the budget goes through programming, which is what you would expect. Uh, it's money for teacher salaries, books, that type of thing. Uh, that is where the change is in this budget. Um, Administrative is generally flat. There is a capital piece that has an increase, uh, but that is in line with their long term planning. So the overall uh, growth of the budget, the level about 3.4%, really falls in sort of the same three buckets that we've always uh, seen before. What's changing in administrative? It's changing a little bit. Uh, most of that is budget methodology, uh, redistributing some of the what budget money in administrative back into uh, programming, uh, reclassing some, uh, some of the BOCES costs uh, with need of risk management uh, is a small uh, part of moving up capital into administrative. No change actually with the decrease in the net cost, uh, but it has changed how we do the accounting for it. So the administrative piece is somewhat flat. And then the programming on the next slide is growing, but this growth is pretty standard as well. So. The increase in the program is pretty consistent with what we have every year. Um, about $400,000 in salary, budgeted salary increase, budgeted amount. Uh, benefits are increasing along with that. So that's for both the instructional staff and uh, pupil transportation falls under this, into this category as well. And then we have an increase in salary pieces um, for the transportation department as well. So the budget change within the programming, but contractual expenses for people that are here. Then under capital itself, Next one, um, we have a structure to debt in a way, um, but our long-term planning uh, an increase of about a million dollars of tax cap compliant budget, uh, continued additional principal payment on some of these bonds and transition into long-term debt, 
And then we're also asking the, the community to vote on, as part of the general fund budget, a repair of the middle school roof and some furniture pieces uh, when the furniture is aged out. And that is, is the increase in the capital fund budget. So the revenue piece, it's hard to look back at last year's revenue when we make these comparisons. Um, the tax levy is increasing just about 2%. Uh, that is in recognition of the fact that we do have this additional federal money. The federal money in part is related to some of the additional COVID costs the schools experienced this year and projects to increase and continue to have expenditures from last year. Last year, we didn't know where we were was taking. Um, really through most of the year, and even almost to this point, as much as there's some good news, we don't have a solid ground of numbers of what the state is finally going to be. But the state for next year looks very solid. The, the state of New York is a very good job it appears looking at foundation aid, looking at the equity of the formulas, and getting state money to schools uh, based on their enrollment, and based on how much that enrollment, relative enrollment is, is in poverty and how much of it is low wealth. And it's greatly going to help the tax burden for the Queensbury School District and allow us to provide the educational program uh, years to come. We do use appropriated fund balance as a, as a budgeting tool. We talked about that a lot. If you were budgeted budget $100, you're not going to be able to spend all that $100. So, we do have that in there as a tool. Uh, we do expect to use some fund balance on the roof, but that is in there as well. So the overall budget increase, excuse me, is 3.4% with a tax increase of about 2% on the left. The only thing that I wanted to point out with this slide, and obviously it looks skewed um, in the voter turnout. Last year was all absentee ballot. Um, with the success rate of the budget itself has been very good. Uh, people have turned out, people have voted. But I did want to point out in the tax gap era, we have seen decreases in turnout for the community. So even though it's good news, federal money's here, um, the state aid seems to be resolved in a lot of ways. Uh, in order to keep the programming, in order to keep the all the pieces we need as we enter another year of the pandemic next year and have all the requirements around that, uh, we do we would need turnout uh, to ensure that the expenditures and the program is lined up the way the Board of Education has asked for us out to the community so that's just this one i guess concern as we move into the vote so we're right at the end uh may 10th is the public hearing uh we'll adopt tonight but the, the public has the ability to provide input on the budget on the 10th uh, but really that input comes in forms of the budget vote so on the 18th they will go out and tell us as a school district and board of education if this uh, is successful by the community are there any questions at this point any questions among the board? Hearing none. Yep, thank you very much. Yep, go ahead. So, Amy, you're fat. I'm good, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gordon Martin. Good news to be. Next, we have a Exciting presentation, the Battle of the Books with grade three and five. This is Rossetti and this is Kai. Yeah, for, oh. We're really excited to be here this evening with many of our students on the screen there. Um, but uh, this is Kasha and I wanted to recognize our grade three and grade five Battle of the Books teams. Um, they competed this year. We've been competing in this competition for 10 years now. And believe it or not, they, we've had amazing teams in the past, but this year we took first place in both grade three and grade five. And we're really proud of our students on the screen over there. So we have a number of students who participated at QEF. We had 15 participants in our grade three Battle of the Books um, team. Of those 15 kids, six students were selected to sit around the table for the actual competition. And our coach, they were led by Mrs. Sarah Oliver, our, um, our librarian. Sarah, I think I see you up there. Let's see, Mr. Lister, can you pin her there? There she is. So Sarah, do you wanna just say a couple of words about this team? Absolutely. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having us on. Um, as Mrs. Rossetti said, this is our 10th year. And this year was unusual since we were not able to meet in person, either for our morning meetings or for the actual battle itself. Um, 
My kids read 10 books, five fiction and five nonfiction at a very high reading level in a short amount of time. So it's a demanding program. They took a lot of quizzes to get ready for the actual battle. And the battle itself was done through Nearpod, which is um, an online platform. And the kids really excelled at it. A lot of this was independent work. The kids had to study and prepare individually. And in years past, they were able to confer with each other when a question was asked and come to a conclusion together as a team. But uh, this year they were not allowed to do that. Uh, it was a really, really fun year. I enjoyed meeting with the kids via Google Meet every, every uh, Tuesday morning. And when that first Tuesday morning rolled around that the Battle of the Books program had ended, we were all a little bit sad to not be able to meet and to, to discuss a book again. Um, but I've got six of our kiddos on here if, if we want to introduce them, Mrs. Rossetti. Absolutely, Mrs. Oliver. Boys and girls, I'll call your name, and what I'll ask that you do is unmute yourself, and I'd like you to tell us your favorite book that you read and one thing you enjoyed about participating in the battle this year and in the program this year. So we'll start with Amelia Kolofsky. Amelia, I see it right there in the middle of the screen. What I liked most about the Battle of the Books was that some of the books I really enjoyed may have been a book that I would have never picked out on my own. Great. What was one of your favorite titles, Amelia? Sarah Plain and Tall by Patricia McLaughlin. Good job. And you may or may not know, as part of the competition, when they respond, they have to respond with the entire, entire, entire title as well as the author. So spoken like a true battle of the books participant. Thanks, Amelia. Next, we have Emma Kennedy. Emma, go ahead and unmute. Emma, can you tell us what you enjoyed about participating? Um, I liked how we would read a bunch of different books and there was a big variety. We had one that was really scary and then we had one that was um, really like mellow and you felt it in your heart. You felt it in your heart, very good. What was your favorite book? Um, a Handful of Stars. By who's the author? Cynthia Lord. Oh, thank you. We're adding a book list here. I think as we start. Thanks, Emma. How about Tice Mulder? Tice, I see you on there. Tell us what your favorite part about participating was. Uh, hi, I've enjoyed Battle of the Books. Um, the um, I've had fun reading to my family. Um, and figuring out more books I like. And my favorite book was A Handful of Stars, like Emma. Excellent, thanks, Tice. Next up, we have Mitch Mulder. Mitch, go ahead and unmute and tell us how you Um. So my favorite book was Easel Because of When dixie um, by, um, Kate DiCamillo or um, A Handful of Stars um, by Cynthia Lord. Um, um, so I felt like Because of When Dixie was a really great book, but we had already read it in school. Um, and I felt like um, A Handful of Stars was a really great book and it was new. Um, and what I like about Battle of the Books is that it's all about reading books. And when you read a book, it feels like it's a whole different world. And it feels like you're kind of like living in the world. Right on. I love that, Mitch. Thanks for sharing. Sophie Van Hatton, I see you out there. Sophie, tell us what you enjoyed about participating in this club. <laughs> Um, my favorite book was A Handful of Stars by Cynthia Lord because I love the animals and the dog that was blind and... What did you enjoy about participating in the club? That I love reading books and it was fun just reading all of them. Nice. We love readers out there. You know that. 
And finally, I have John Engel. John, tell us what your favorite part about participating in this club was. John, are you out there? You want to unmute? While well, we search for John, I just want to also recognize we had, like I said, we had 15 participants in this club, and truly each one of these participants um, deserves a, a shining moment because they read all the books, they prepared, they helped the ultimate team prepare for that final battle. So congratulations to you students as well. Landon Barnes, Lydia Beecher, Rebecca Brown, Emmeline Capone, Avery Kamiski, Vincent Jansen, Chloe Ma, Quinn Nazza, Dominic Lastro. So congratulations out there to all of our team. Did we find John, Mr. Lutringer? I know John um, was a, a strong participant each week. Um, so John, if you're out there, sorry we can't hear you, but I'll pass it on to Mrs. Mrs. Hosh. Again, congratulations to our team on a great win. Thank you, Mrs. Rossetti, and I can only echo what you said and Mrs. Oliver said. I think um, we were in the middle of taking our data test when our fifth graders found out they wanted. They were so great about trying to be quiet, but we literally could hear them through the walls. We were so excited and so proud of them as we went through each round. You know, they started at third and they made it into the, the final round and they finally came in first. So we are really super proud of all the participants. But um, I first want to introduce Miss Alicia Fazio. We're going to be talking about her a lot tonight and her March Madness, but she is also our advisor for the Battle of Books. Alicia, do you want to speak a little bit about this team? Sure. Um, so this team, we started, as, as Sarah had just said, we also did um, the meetings via Google Meet. And we were just so excited to be able to meet every week and, and talk about the books. Um, we do it every other week for about a half an hour. A um, lot of work. Um, as Sarah said, there was a lot of independent work this year. And honestly, these kids worked so, so hard. And I knew they had it in them this year in, in fifth grade. Um, they worked hard on their own. I know they did Google Meets like outside of our meetings. They met with each other. They talked about the books all the time, created their own study guides. So really, they, I can't say enough good things about how hard they worked and the teamwork that they put into this and um, at the competition, how supportive they were of each other as well as they could be because um, they could, again, they couldn't communicate during the competition part, but they were, we had um, extras cheering each other on and being um, good teammates. Um, and so they're just a wonderful group of kids. I know that almost all of them, I think that were on the team are here tonight. So um, I'm really excited to, to let you get a look at all their, their hard work and the, what they have to say. Excellent, thanks Ms. Fazio. It also doesn't help about the, whoever sent them those lollipops at 8.30 a.m. to get them ready for the competition, but it's all in good fun. So first up is Cameron B. Pratt. She's been in the Battle of the Books for two years. So Cameron, why don't you introduce yourself Tell us your favorite book and what did you really learn? What was the highlight from this whole experience? Hi, my favorite book was probably Breakout by Kate Messner. And I really liked how everyone who was in the final battle, they all tried their best, even if they got a question wrong. Excellent, thanks Cameron. Johnny Cirillo, this was his first year doing Battle of the Books. Johnny, why don't you state your favorite book and a highlight from the season? Hi. Uh, my favorite book was One on the River by Alyssa Carbone, and I really enjoyed reading the books and being able to meet every week. Excellent. Sydney McGrath, she, this is her third year, so she's been in Battle of Books since it's been offered in third, fourth, and in fifth grade. Hi. Uh, my favorite book out of this year was probably Blood on the River by Alyssa Carbone, and what I really liked about Battle of Books this year was the books we read because this was probably my favorite set of books out of all three years. Excellent. Juliana Molnar, she is a three-year uh, participant as well. Where's Jules? She's up there. Um, my favorite book was probably also Blood on the River. Um, by Lisa Carbone. It was it was really good. Yeah. Um, my favorite part was like all the excitement. Like when you joined that meet, you felt like excitement in like the room. 
Um, and when you take like that final test, there's so much anticipation. And it's like really fun to be with people that love books as much as me. Lots of energy and excitement during that battle, absolutely. Mary Russell. Hello. Um, my favorite book was Breakout by Kate Messner. And I liked that I didn't, I, I got to read books that I typically wouldn't choose to read. And I loved the books. Uh, Mary is also a three year participant in Battle of the Books. Uh, Kate Trowbridge, another three year participant. Hi, so my favorite book had to be either uh, The Crossover or A Dog's Life. And um, I love just meeting every other week and talking with my teammates and uh, Miss Fazio. It was just really fun. Thank you, Kate. Kyle Underwood, um, he was new to Queensbury last year, but he participated when he was in third grade at his previous school district. So this he's also a three year participant as well. Um, my favorite book is um, A Dog's Life by Anna Martin. And what I liked the most about Battle of the Books was meeting new people and having fun with them. Yeah, and if you notice from Kyle earlier, he has his mask off now, but he was a runner up in the spelling bee, which we're going to talk about a little later. So congratulations. That was a busy day for you, Kyle, wasn't it? Busy week. Um, yeah. And our two alternates, we have Mikey Sheehan, um, who was also a three-year participant. He's on Go ahead, Mikey. Um, my favorite book was Breakout by Kate Messner. And my favorite part about Battle of the Books this year was that I was able to cheer people on and be able to hang out with people that I wouldn't be able to meet this year because I was virtual. Yes, great. And we're really excited. Mikey will be coming back to in-person learning on Monday. We can't wait to have you back in time and in, in person full time, Mikey. And Kyla Wilson, this was her first year joining Battle of the Books. She's the entry on this one. Hello. Um, my favorite book for Battle of the Books is probably Breakout by Kate Messner. And I love joining Battle of the Books because I would be with people I normally wouldn't be with and books I normally wouldn't read. Excellent. Thank you, um, all boys and girls. Big round of applause again. We are so excited. So great. Thank you, To recommend, um, not recommend, also recognize uh, the other participants Violet Brown, Skylar LaCroix, Sage Penrose, Gabby Telesco, and Brooklyn Tucker. So, congratulations to all. We really look forward to next year, and I know a lot of those fifth graders are really excited to go to Mr. Brennan to the middle school and participate with the sixth grade battle of the books. And we can't wait for the third graders to come up to the WHBI and participate next year as well. I want to uh, just take a second to say how proud I am of all the kids out there and their families, because I know there's work on the back end as, as families, and to our two coaches, you made school history. It's the <laughs> first time ever we've had two teams get first place at Queensbury. And Ms. Fazio knows, I've been harping on this for years. So I'm really, really proud. Two first places, amazing job. But my favorite part of the show tonight was watching Mitchell Moldner in the basement. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Moldner, I think we're on the first floor, and I think Jules may have been out on the lawn. So I'm not sure. <laughs> Three Moldners. Congratulations to all our families. I'm very, very proud of our kids. What a great, great group of kids and families. So thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely. On behalf of the board, I'm sure uh, everyone uh, agrees that it's uh, always great news to see the kids and see them succeed, see them uh, enjoy the competition and uh, the reading. So we got to get them out and share those kids with some of the other kids that maybe don't want to read so much, just like my son. <laughs> 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 Club and the reading, and I love the reading 
is something that will be with you for the best rest of your life. But I think Mitch said it, that a book can transport you someplace else. Um, I know when I go on vacation, my Kindle has three to five books downloaded. I mean, I do that as I'm packing. And it's, I read every night, and it's just an amazing, amazing thing. So keep up the great work. I'm so proud of all of you guys. Good job. Absolutely, Ms. Holden, thank you. Any other board members? Okay. Uh, we have, uh, I can ask, the, the, a dog's life. Is that the one that we did in the movie? There's like narrating them right around. Dog's purpose. Dog's purpose, sorry. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a dog's life is a good book, too. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read it. So uh, next we have uh, Ms. Scott. Good yes, thank you, Mr. Mannix. Um, about the middle of March, Mr. Gannon approached me. Um, as you know, he was at the WHBI for so many years and knows how busy March is at the WHBI, as it is everywhere on campus. But we really wanted to highlight uh, some of the wonderful things that are happening at the WHBI and that during this COVID has not stopped us. And that's been one thing I've been so proud about at Queensbury and all the buildings is continuing on with traditions thinking outside the box and really giving the students the best opportunity that we possibly can remotely and in person. So we just wanted to highlight a few of those. We're gonna start it off with our March Music Madness. This is something that Ms. Tetlack um, started last year to help kids stay engaged during music classes. So it was such a big hit in our building that we continued, wanted to continue the, this year. Students and staff participated 900 submissions were submitted from our students. They had to research, they had to list the genre, they had to make sure that the lyrics were appropriate, and then they would submit it in a Google form to Ms. Tetlack. And then she chose the top 32 songs. And each week we would get an email, the staff and the students would do this during the beginning parts of music classes or warm up, where Ms. Tetlack would choose Group North. And then you, she would have the links to their videos the lyrics, and then you had to basically vote, basically filling out like a March Madness bracket, one session at a time. We haven't finished it yet. It'll probably be finished um, by the middle of April, but it's really been something to engage in. I know even at the Cash household, I sit down with our family, we listen to the song lyrics, and we kind of vote as a family, but also it's a great way for the staff and the students to participate. And we end up with, you know, a, a building wide song and it's really interesting to see the different varieties of genre um, from staff members to students um, and what they contribute. As you saw, Kyle Underwood was our runner up, but we held our, our annual spelling bee last year, uh, this year. That was something that we had the representatives ready to go and then we closed school. So even though we don't know if there's going to be a regional spelling bee or not in June. We said, we're still going to do this. We're still going to have our spelling bee competition. And it was such a great event. Um, we had the classes each take a test in their own classrooms. Mrs. Carpenter or the classroom teachers um, score them. And then each class has a representative or an alternate. And usually the auditorium or the gymnasium is packed with, as an assembly form. Parents are invited into the spelling bee. But we said, we're still going to do this. The kids are spaced out within the gymnasium. Students are able to watch from their classrooms. Parents and grandparents are able to watch from their houses. We got many um, compliments from grandparents that wouldn't have been able to travel to the gym, uh, to the school, thanking us for being able to provide that um, for them to be able to watch from home. I know it would take a few pictures and, and send it to parents that I know. I know uh, Jules Mulder was in here now sending it to Josh and Maria. And, you know, as it was live going back and forth. And it just was a different level and a different experience that um, we were really happy to be able to continue that tradition. Nicholas Mound was our winner. Um, interesting fact, the top four, three of them were fourth graders. And I will tell you, these words are so hard. I probably would have gotten out on the first practice round. Um, and I, our producers were the ones that were recording and I'm going to Nick and I'm like, can you spell those words? Because I can't spell those words. but. Really proud of them for getting up and working through. It, it, this was a great event. March was busy because that was one day. This was the exact same day for our Battle of the Books. Um, as we just saw, our fifth graders, but the same day as our spelling bee, our fourth graders participated. 
And I wanted to acknowledge our fourth graders as well. Um, the team members there were Andrew Agresta, Alice Fosford, Jeff Brown, Michaela Capone, Mallory Cash, Daly Gerard, and Alex Mylott. Um, they did a great job. They did not make it into the final round. It was really nice um, to watch them work hard. Great teamwork, great effort. Um, again, a, a busy day. This happened the same day as our spelling bee. And the next uh, highlight that we want to showcase from the WHBI is our drama club. We couldn't thank the Board of Education enough and the PTA for being able to support this. This is one of the events where it's on a much smaller scale than the high school, but it's really big and important for us at the WHBI. The kids would go over and they would perform for the third grade, second and third graders. They would perform for us in the school, and then we would have a nighttime performance. And we were really um, thankful that we got our production off in time last year, uh, the same week that we ended up closing um, by that Friday. But uh, Ms. Fazio, again, so involved um, with us at the WHBI, came to myself with a plan. She's like, I still want to do drama club. We met with Mr. Gannon. We had the layout. We had our safety plan in place. And this way, we're doing it this year. We're able to reach more students than we were to if we would have been able to do one production. So we broke it up into three different parts, three smaller scale performances. So the first one in February, if you remember, we did, um, hold on one second, my notes. Snow White Lit. And this last one that we did in March was Simply Cinderella. And Ms. Fazio and Ms. Tetlack are the advisors for this. We still did the casting, you know, their thank you notes, there's still programs, there's brochures. Um, we do a recording after school one day. We, they run through it about three or four times, and then Mrs. Fazio combined into one full production video that gets sent out to the families. And then we really did something that I thought was pretty neat. Instead of dinner and a, dinner and a show, we did lunch and a show. So the kids would come down um, on a Thursday, performed it live, and just like we did our spelling bee, the students would be watching from their classrooms during their lunch period. It really was a great experience. Um, we still have one more production to do, but I also want to take this moment to introduce uh, Nick Merzig. Uh, so Mr. Luther, if we could pin Nick, he was our Prince Sherber. So we wanted to hear from our perspective of Nick tonight on how being part of Drama Club has really shaped him this year and all the WHBI has offered. Oh, he's right there, Tracy Merzig. Hi, Nick. Hello. So tell me what's been so special about the WHBI this year? Um, something special I, that I think about the WHBI is that I can actually go to the school and see my friends instead of being stuck behind a computer screen, having to see them virtually on a Google Meet, I can actually see them in person and communicate with them much better than I could ever being on a Google Meet. You are so involved at the W. You're like Mr. WHBI this year. Why don't you tell the Board of Education everything that you are part of? I'm a part of band or not orchestra, um, drama club, chorus. I'm the producer for the morning announcements and, and I'm a part of text bits. What's your favorite part of the day, Nick? Come on. Um, it's probably doing the announcements is my favorite. What do you like so much about the, being our, one of our producers? My favorite part of being a producer is that I, whenever, if a problem ever goes with the announcements, whenever we're watching it at the classroom, I can always fill my class in on what happening, what's the lunch today, and any special announcements there was. <laughs> we show you sometimes, weren't you helping out with our smart and shape the other day, modeling for us? Mm -hmm. What did Mrs. Hash have you doing? laying on the ground <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about drama club what was so great about being prince sherbert this time um i it was nice being a big character though all characters are important to the play and i was happy that drama club could go this year because i was like it's not gonna go but then when i heard it i was so excited and then as soon as I came out of the announcements. I grabbed the form and stuffed it into my folder. And the next morning, the first thing my mom heard was, mom, we're signing up for a drama club. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much. Was it, <laughs> and then we're going to run it uh, after Ms. Fazio one more time to, and we know how much she loves public speaking. So talk to us a little bit, Ms. Fazio, about Drama Club this year. Um, so hi, everyone again. Um, so the first thing I want to say was I just want to give a big thank you and talk about how grateful I am that we were able to put this club on this year. Um, one of the great things about WHBI is um, how many clubs and how wonderful the clubs are that we have um, and the quality of the clubs. And so it's such an important thing. And this is such a good foundation for students that are interested in drama club in any kind of aspect. Um, so um, as Mrs. Kosh said, we were able to actually involve 75 kids this year, which is more than I think we usually do um, by splitting it up into the three shows. Um, and it's just been really fun to kind of get to know them in the smaller groups. Um, each show has its own cast and crew and script. So we did three different shows. Um, and it's been nice to have a chance to even do a stage crew. Um, not the same as we usually do, of course, but they're still able to, those behind the scenes kind of kids are still able to get involved, which is really such a nice, um, a nice part of it too. That was always what I did when I was involved in our plays. Um, but it's been really fun to, to work with the different groups. Um, we just started our third one today. Um, Belle and that Beast guy, we just met after school with actually a lot of the kids that are in Battle of the Books were also involved in Drama Club. We have a lot of involved students at WHBI, so some of them are still hanging on. Um, and some of our other uh, earlier casts are on tonight too. Um, but it's been so nice just to see them go with the flow and figure out how to make things work. And yeah, break out of the garbage. We have that, um, that we the are with to being in the gym or figuring out sound, things like that. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, the kids have been amazing. Um, and again, we're just so appreciative that we were able to, to have this chance to have them be creative and work together. Um, it's been wonderful seeing them so happy being able to be together and create something and, and do this club. So um, thank you again, it's been, it's been great. So we'll see how our next one goes. I have uh, no doubt that it'll be just as fun and exciting as the first two were. Thanks, Ms. Fazio. Before we move on, I'd like to just showcase some of Nick and the rest of the Drama Clues production. If you weren't able to see it, Ms. Fazio put together a quick one minute um, uh, uh, part of the play that is so funny with, you know, how we have to stay distance and, and, and be uh, separated from each other. Um, just, we'll just play the clip.
we would jam pack over 500 people in the gymnasium, have some basket auctions, dance party, trivia, jokes. We just couldn't say no again this year. Um, so first, I just want to point out all the people that helped support us. Um, that one, the picture on the right is all the John Lutheraner again. He was helping being one of our co-hosts, managing behind the scenes. Mr. Appleby um, opened the show with some playing with the steel drum. Mrs. Lamory, Mr. Lance, the single was our behind the scenes camera woman. Ms. Eggleston, Ms. Deno, Ms. Fazio again, uh, Ms. Iantaska, they were, they were our DJs, and Mrs. Bosford as well, our PTA Vice President. But in order to really get the true effect of our, our family fun night, I would like to call up again, Kate Trowbridge, Deb, and Alice Trowbridge to get kind of a family perspective of the involvement, not only with our students at the WHBI, but also our family. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so Kate, tell us a little bit about Family Fun Night. So uh, we all joined this meet, uh, the participants of it, and um, it started off so fun. We There were dancing and bingo nights, er, and then bingo cards and stuff, and um and jokes and riddles and it was so fun were you getting up and dancing who did you see dancing <laughs> <laughs> yeah everyone right it was so nice to see every family in different parts of their house whether it's kitchen their living room on a couch getting up and having i know this is but he had a blast too as well with ella um what was it like Kate? because i know as uh, alice and deb also She's your baby. She's her last one, the last trip to WHBI. You know, to be able to still participate in our family fun night, how does that feel as a family? It, well, I it is. She is our baby. We've we've been with WHBI. We have someone in, in in high school and in middle school, and so we've been there for for six years. This is our sixth year, and um, and it was just we weren't sure how how the year would feel and 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 how family night would be. We always look forward to that and. Um, and to have that experience in March and to see, you know, some of our, our best friends out there with their families getting up and dancing and stuff was, was, um, was so special. And we just, we just want to thank you all for, um, mm -hmm. we're so grateful for the way that you found a way and, and made things like this happen. I know, I know Jeb has um, something to say about no, dancing. <laughs> he loves doing that. <laughs> Well, first, first of all, like bingo, bingo's fun, but I haven't done it in I don't know how many decades. Um, but like that, that, that night was just so much fun. Mm -hmm. Like, and and it's but bingo is fun, but I think the, how you guys did it and the fun that you um, you were having in the gym, it felt like we were right there. I mean, it, it was such yeah. a gift, and it could not have come at a better time. I feel like you know we were just at the throes, the end of winter just looking forward to spring break and here was this thing that brought brought all of us together and really made us feel like we were part of something special at the whbi um and i also realized that that i don't think i've had as much fun on a friday night in a long time which is <laughs> a little concerning but but not it's it was it was just so much fun um so thank you i know Kate, you were hitting it up with the chat room so we'll talk a little bit about how we interacted with you at home yeah so um so we uh got asked questions and riddles and like we were just racing to the chat box and then like oh no we have to make sure they see our comment so they may or, like say our name first or something and like mention this hogwarts because all of the hogwarts houses and mm -hmm. we all know all of them <laughs> Yeah. A lot of fun. So we just want to thank the Trowbridge for participating. We had over 170 at least logins. Uh, I think we had a lot more because it was based on family. So it was another way to continue to continue the traditions of the WBK. So thanks, Alice, Jeff, and Kate as well. You and did. we have one last thing to say before we left for spring break. We went to Disneyland virtually. Uh, our PE department spun things around with our curriculum and we ran to Disney World, um, we gave last eight days we took. Um, we started at 425, which is the end of the address for the WHBI. Our goal was a thousand miles and we surpassed that. We actually ended up into the heart of the Walt Disney Resort. So if we go to the next slide, Mr. Luthringer, 
Coach Carpenter and Coach Williams, each day on a morning announcement, we would talk about the tallies of how each class was participating. We ended up in Poughkeepsie, New York, which is right near my hometown after day one. Then we ran our way to DC. Then we ran to Richmond, Virginia, to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Day five, we didn't have much going on that day. We I believe we had our data test that day. So a lot of uh, our schedules were changed, but we went to Dillon, South Carolina, uh, Savannah, Georgia. Then we ended up um, in Jacksonville, Florida, and then finally at the heart of Disneyland in Orlando. So the fun way that we were able to interact with the students, our remote students got involved as well, really ended up on a high note going to spring break week, setting a goal for ourselves as a team. So I know this is long-winded, but I appreciate the board taking their time to listen to us highlight all what the WHBI had to offer. And Martin, again, we can't thank you enough for continuing to support all of our programs, our clubs, and activities that we normally wouldn't have during this circumstance. So thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? No, just thank you. <laughs> I don't know how to follow up with that. It's amazing. And that was March. <laughs> Gosh, thank you for your energy and uh, your friends of the building and uh, all the things that you uh, were able to do and all the programs that support the WGI. Certainly so great to see. It's such a team effort. We really have the best staff here on in the in, in the area or even in the world. I mean, truly, it's it's a whole team effort and everyone's willing to pitch in and, and help out. The amount of people that show up on a Friday night to an empty gymnasium. Dancing around like fools, but knowing that it's affecting kids at home, you yeah. know, and that's really, you know, what we couldn't ask for a better uh, faculty staff. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Okay. So we've we'll gone to an open forum. Uh, there will be two open forums uh, this evening. To uh, provide the public an opportunity to address the Board of Education. We ask the participants who wish to speak during the first open forum to type their name in the chat box. And when called upon, identify themselves and if applicable to the organization they are representing. For clarity, we ask that all speakers identify the school related matter topic to be discussed. In order to conduct district business in a smooth, orderly, and timely manner, Open form is limited to a maximum of 30 minutes, with three minutes allocated to each speaker. And we certainly appreciate the public's attendance and participation at our meeting. So, with that, uh, Mr. Luke has anybody signed up? At this time, Mr. we do not have anyone signed up. Thank you. We'll come back to it at the end of the meeting again. So, uh, Mr. Whitmore. Committed to the board approve this item A. Motion adopted 2021 2022 budget in the amount of $69,855,000. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please? Yeah. Thank you, Kathy. A second? Second. Second, Tim. Thanks, Fran. Uh, then I have Fran. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on the Motion. Right now, we'll take a roll call vote. Trustee Belgian? Aye. Trustee Cabana? Aye. Trustee Clarity? Aye. Trustee Bolger? Aye. Trustee Manning? Aye. Trustee Malloy? Aye. Trustee Shea? Aye. Trustee Weaver? Aye. Recommend the board of Recommended the board approve business item the motion to approve the intermediate grade school district property tax report for the year 2021. Have a motion, please. Kathy, second. Second. Well, Amy. 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 Yep. Amy. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the vote, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Indicate by saying nay. Any abstention? Motion passed. And we do have all the members of the board now. 
recommended for the business that I have seen through the Before we take a motion, before we take a motion, does anyone need any of the items? A, I'm sorry, C for W removed. Okay. All those in favor of that this is not C for W, do you indicate by saying aye? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you so much for having me. Oh, geez, there I am. Looking forward to getting back to Queensbury. I appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you again here. Oh, that's good. Uh, it's a pleasure working with you again. Thank you. All right. Uh, again. Thank you, Mr. Mannix, and congratulations to the Dawes Welcome Board. I recommend the board move to approve the following educational item. It's a motion to approve the following resolution. And that is that um, for the high risk sport and need of boys lacrosse, and that's the only sport that uh, falls into that category. Dr. Leonard has approved our plan and um, the fees has submitted it. So it's all set. So I recommend the board move to approve action item A. Can I get a motion, please? So move, Mike. Next five seconds. Second, Fran. Any discussion on the motion for letter A? This is the essentially the same plan that we submitted before with same protocols. It's uh, worked out pretty well thus far. Um, so, I'm going to roll call vote. Please, one more. Trustee Belden? Aye. Trustee Cabana? Aye. Trustee Flaherty? Aye. Trustee Holter? Aye. Trustee Mannix? Aye. Trustee Malloy? Aye. Trustee Shea? Aye. Trustee Aye. I recommend the board move to approve action item B, the motion to approve the following probationary appointment of Cassandra Book to the WHBI as a grade five teacher. Can I have a motion, please? Yeah. Any second? Second. Yeah. Yes. Any discussion on motion B? Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. I recommend the board move to approve action item C. Motion to approve the following probationary appointment. Nick Wyden, the QMS Social Studies, grade six teacher. Motion, please, for letter C. Thank you, Kathy. Second. Second, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Any discussion on motion C? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion C carries. I recommend the board move to approve action item D, the motion to approve the following long-term substitute teacher appointment of Lynn Doherty. 
QHS are for you. I have a motion for letter D, please. Thank you, Kathy. Second. Second. Thanks, Tim. Any discussion on motion D? Hearing none, all those in favor of motion D, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion D carried. I recommend the board move to approve action item E, the motion to approve the following long term substitute teacher employment of Kathleen Burton, WHDI grade four and five, ELA teacher, long term sub. So moved, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Second. Second. Thank you, Kathy. Any discussion on the motion E? Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And I'm going to abstain. But the motion passes. I recommend the board move to approve action item F. The motion to approve the following long term substitute teacher appointment of Paul Weeks, QES teacher, grade three, long term substitute. Motion, please. So moved. Thank you, Daddy. Second. Second, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Any discussion on motion F? Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passed. I recommend the board move to approve educational consent items C through you. Does anyone need any other motion? Uh, your educational consent items D through you poll. Okay, can I get a motion, please? So moved. Amy. Amy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. And all those in favor of the education of the D for you, please keep it saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Now's the opportunity for, uh, to have our second open forum. The same uh, protocol and procedures apply. If you wish to participate, please just type your name in the chat box. This one's right here? No? Okay. I'll close the open forum. Uh, any board committee reports? Sure, any safety thing there? Uh, safety net. I'm not sure we have board members there in the virtual format, but we did a, a short tabletop uh, discuss some of the briefly discuss some of the meetings that they came out on Friday. Uh, but most of the time was spent on the tabletop. Um, I would like to really congratulate Sarah Barsakoff and the work we've done on the on the Temple High School because they really have that program. Any other committee reports? Okay. Uh, board member comments. It's Amy. I'd like to just make one quick comment. Um, the Friday report, I was looking at the presentation for the cleaner internship program and I just thought that was a fantastic idea. Just wanted to share that. I think um, it's great when we can involve the youth in additional learning outside of the classroom. So I think it's a great opportunity. And I was really impressed too with how much training goes into um, our custodial staff. And so I think that's gonna be a great opportunity. Look forward to hearing more about it as the program unfolds and, and some students participate in it. Yeah, thank you, Amy. I really appreciate that. Special thanks to Chris Bennett Barnes, Robin Scott, and Eric Wright. Um, we hope to very soon be hiring some of our older students as they move out of Queensbury High School and into employment right here at Queensbury as a result of this program. We're very excited about it. So thank you for that. Any other board member comments? Just have a couple. Uh, I did want to uh, give a little uh, shout out to the uh, 
a big shout out to the building and grounds and lake staff and maintenance staff. Um, we had a day honoring them uh, last week, I believe. And we do have, uh, in my estimation, I'm sure you all share the best uh, staff in, uh, in the area. We uh, we come to school with the, the best looking grounds. Uh, the buildings are always in top condition. Uh, the, above and beyond the cleaning that uh, they've been asked to do during all of this, uh, everyone's done it and every challenge. So for all of those uh, folks on staff, we really appreciate it. We can do it every day, and you certainly do deserve uh, your, your own special day. So, so thank you. And um, I know that there was an article on the paper for the New York State to approve uh, changing our protocol from six feet to three feet. And, uh, but there are some questions and some things that go along with that. So, uh, well, certainly good news, we still have some work to do. Uh, I'm not sure if they need to discuss any about bus protocols. Um, so, how much can you get? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mann. We're, we're not there yet as a school. The protocols did come out over um, the week, but we we certainly have um, gone through this control strip myself. I've looked at things, but we uh, there's a lot of work to be done, a lot of discussions to be had. At this point in time, the only clear cut piece that we can see um, is that uh, chorus and band could move from 12 feet to 6 feet. So that's one clear cut piece that came out of this. We did get graduation guidance today. Um, I did prove, I, I literally received uh, uh, from Janelle Jones at about six o'clock. I was looking at it right before the board meeting. It's still, it's going to take a little bit of work to figure out what that looks like um, for the graduation guidance. But other than that, the new guidance that just came out, we're going to be going through it on that meeting on Wednesday, um, pouring through the document with all the other superintendents wish we both see said um, we're going to be continuing to keep our great partnership with public health um, throughout all of this but there's we, we continue to bring kids back as the board knows um, and some of the people that were approved tonight will be filling those classrooms that we did not have enough room to put students in and we will be hiring more i know this is gosh at more interviews this week um, this is rosetti so working on filling a couple of those positions so we continue to expand our classrooms as we uh, so that we bring students back. It feels really good to have the traffic flowing. That's for sure. See everybody's face. But more to come on the guys. But I'm handing you my Chromebook, and I'll hand you the mic. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, any other board member comments? Okay. Uh, I mean, there's obviously a list of, uh, of informational items. Um, that's all there for your perusal and on the website. So this time we need a motion to go into executive session. Uh, into section 108 sub 3 of the open meetings law to discuss the attorney client privilege matter that is confidential by state law and by FERPA. Have a motion, please. So thank you, Mr. Banna. Second. Thank you, Justice. All in favor going into executive session, please give her saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all for attending this evening. Thank you to all the students and the parents. Uh, it was uh, great to see you here. So I uh, look forward to seeing you next meeting. Thank you all.